So, let me ask you a question. Why is retro media so badly represented in the modern age? Hello boys and girls and welcome back to yet another episode of John Tay Talks About Shit that literally no one else cares about except for maybe himself. Today we're talking about retro bullshit again. Yay, awesome. In the previous few videos, I've talked about uh, chiptune and this time around, I'm just gonna talk about them in general. Now, uh, if you're new here or you didn't really know already, I am a musician. I mainly focus on uh, FM chiptune, more specifically on the Sega Mega Drive. But I do other stuff as well. And when it comes to talking about chiptune, I tend to be very critical uh, about things. So yeah, I may tend to be a nerd, a nunce, uh, a jerk, something in the lines of that when talking about it specifically. Because you tend to be a bit more defensive and critical for the things that you're passionate about, right? I mean, I get mad a little, but I don't really show it. I mostly keep that shit to myself because I, I'm not that big of an asshole. I used to be quite an asshole though, that's one thing. The point is, I enjoy retro video game music and just retro video games in general, right? Like. I enjoy these games, I play them, um, I talk to my friends about it. It's kind of rare to find people who are eager to talk about this stuff nowadays. Because like, you know, they're retro, old, uh, not really, but possibly outdated. So people kind of disregard them and just kind of move on. But I do know the fact that retro media has somewhat of a cult following here on the internet people go back and look at the good old days and appreciating for what older media is and what they represent and how they change today's standards and that kind of stuff. I feel like I have to specify this for those who don't know, but when I talk about retro media, I mean media that spawned around the early 80s to late 90s, as in uh, digital media. And I'm not really sure about the specifications, but the term is mostly aimed towards older video games. So I'm going to use that definition to talk about things because like, it's in my ballpark and it's definitely something that we can discuss here. Before we jump into why it's so badly represented in uh, these days, we need to talk about why people enjoy these retro video games so much. You have uh, Super Mario, Mega Man, Sonic the Hedgehog, Space Invaders, uh, Outrunners, Contra, and other sort of titles. Why do people enjoy these games? Even though I'm like 16 and I'm born like way after the 80s and 90s, I do have some explanations for that. At the time, digital interactive media and entertainment was still sort of like a new cool concept and people were still experimenting with what would be fun to have like in arcades or in homes or whatever. Video game companies at the time released uh, memorable experiences for everyone to enjoy and I think it started a revolution somewhat and we move forward into this new video game era and so nowadays people like to make references or just like to look back at these older video games and see how far we've come and that kind of stuff I guess. And the older mascots of these video games back in the day are still around in this day of age and companies have given more accessibility to these older games for the newer generation to play. Emulators have been created for other people to like re 
enjoy these moments. To relive the more simpler times. And things nowadays have been going smooth somewhat. There are a lot of titles, modern titles, that are inspired by older games. And some of them are pretty good. I mean, they do kind of break the limit somewhat, but I'm not mad if it's a good game. And with more accessible tools and software, more people could dive into like recreating these experiences or making entire new ones out of them. But then there comes sort of a minor problem. I say sort of because it really isn't the general public's problem for not really knowing, but how ordinary people see and how mainstream media portrays retro video games is kind of whack. The visuals? Ass. The music? Ass. The presentation? Ass. Everything is fucking ass. <laughs> and yeah, the Steam Gardens cover I showed you? That was my content! Everyone falls victim, no one is excluded, no one is safe at all. At this point, I'd rather hear some Friday Night Funkin' kids say that the Sonic trumpet sounds like Majid Sonic. Or, you know, I could just... I could just fucking slap both, I could bully both, it's fine, right? Don't even get me started on video game references and animated TV shows. To be fair with you, it's mainly because I don't watch TV anymore, so I don't know what arguments I can give you. I mean, what I know is that some animated shows can nail it, but like, Overall, an animated media representation really isn't that great either. I do remember watching a classic episode of Lupin the Third. I'm I forgot what season, what episode, but I remember that uh, Lupin and Fujiko were playing Pong in the start of the episode. But that's only because Pong is so simple; it can be so easily represented on a screen. And you also have to consider the time when the episodes took place. So like. Really, Pong isn't big of an issue. What I do have problems with is with modern animated shows, though situations like Family Guy are really just there for parody, so I don't... I don't really care for those. I do understand that... Uh, directors probably wouldn't want to go too hard with the references because of potential lawsuits, but like... You could just... I don't know, you could just make a video game look like a video game without having to reference anything, right? It's not like video games are just fucking Super Mario Brothers and breaking blocks and getting power-ups and what other dumb shit you put in a stupid video game reference. I have yet to see a shoot 'em up reference that isn't fucking Space Invaders. And yeah, like I get it, hashtag relatable, whatever. I just want to see some variety. I think everyone wants to see some variety. Oh yeah, and can we please for the love of Christ talk about the music in these references? Absolutely fucking hate them. Or maybe we should talk about music in these retro re mixes in general. A loaf of bread is way more flavorful than any of these, like Christ. I can't even go through a normal week without thinking about them, it's like I can't live a normal fucking life anymore. Hey, I like the Sega Mega Drive, and I also like Deltarune. Maybe I can go search up one of my favorite songs. Hmm, let's see. A Cyber's World? Sega Mega Drive cover? Awesome, I wonder what it's going to be. Oh, it's Sonic the fucking Hedgehog, of course it is. What's this you say? Spanton in 1991. Hmm, I wonder what music style the composer would use this time. I really hope to hear time tracks though. Oh, that's right, it's Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. I can never escape this blue fucking rat. But again, I have to acknowledge, it isn't their fault. Because I... Know that there is an alternate universe where I fell down the same fate, and I'd be making these remixes all day, and then people would be calling me names and whatever. If it wasn't for YouTube that recommended me to try and use Deathly Mask that one day, I wouldn't have been here. And that's saying something. I think people should acknowledge the fact that there's more to these older video games than just squares on the screen and bleep blop music. Or selling your dog shit pixel art NFT for money laundering. 
aspects of older video games shouldn't be treated as an aesthetic like sprinkle for your cake. People who developed video games back in the day didn't really think of it this way. Uh, partially because it was still a fresh new thing. But it's also partially because they were giving you an experience. If people really focused on the aesthetic of an older video game, then the game is basically a hollow shell. It's almost nothing on the inside. It's only for show. And usually this is like really shallow stuff too. Like some kind of TV show just throws a reference in you and goes like, ah, ah, gotcha. <laughs> and then it gets awkward for like a few minutes. Personally, I feel that retro video games sh should be represented in modern media as faithful as possible. Not just some Super Mario or Pokemon reference again. These games play a large part of the history in pop culture. And looking at what people are doing now, it feels like a really big parody. A tainted image of them, dare I add. And honestly, respect to indie devs, man. They're fucking great. Do your research before doing these things, okay? Companies should hire the people who know what they're doing with these things. If some fucking Honey Nut Cheerios ad could put so much effort into promoting Sonic 2 back in 1992 from the visual aspects to the audio, then I don't really see why people can't put that effort in now. There is so much hidden potential. But then again, no matter how many times I flap my fucking mouth, I doubt anyone is going to care. I doubt anything is going to change this day onward. And you know what? That's okay. I can live with that for now. So, thank you for coming today. I'm your host, John Tay, and I am out.